to Live and Breathe Horses and today we are going on with this wonderful book about Tom Doran's More Than a Horseman and it's stories of his life and work which were collected by his wife Margaret and by John St Ryan. And today's story comes from Andre Forzani and excuse me if I'm pronouncing the name wrong. Tom had a way of making a point by creating a situation that explains itself without much talking. Actions really do speak louder than words. For example, the powers of observation, feeling and sensing are very important between humans and horses. I must say that horses are more adapt at this than a lot of us humans. A good memory is also important. A client had purchased a pony from us. She was the kind of person that let you know how smart she was right off the bat especially when she was in an insecure spot. I think Tom figured out that an opportunity to get her to look a little further than the outside of her horse presented itself. Now, she'd bought the pony the previous day after a long look, a vet check and a lengthy tryout. She drove her truck and trailer up the next morning to pick it up. We had another pony on the ranch and this pony was also a bay about the same size, but it was lighter, a mare, she'd bought a gelding, and not as groomed and shiny as the one she'd purchased. In fact, it didn't have a trimmed mane and its fetlocks were a bit shaggy. The lady went into the pen, caught the pony and led it to the trailer. Earlier, Tom had changed pens with the ponies. The lady was about to load it when Tom intervened and mentioned she might have the wrong pony and she needed to take a good look. I don't know to this day if she ever got the point and figured that day's lesson. Again, I can just hear Tom saying, fix it up and let them find it. Observe, remember and compare. Tom Doran's Extra Sensory Exception with each next generation, with a few exceptions, we humans are moving further and further away from understanding animals and our past and present understanding of one another. Will there ever be another Tom? I doubt it without a miracle. Kids can look up animal facts on the internet, but that can't replace real animal knowledge from birth on. No animal dependence, connection, smell, feel or mutual need will ever be experienced without living in the past briefly and often. Yes, some kids get to take riding lessons but they don't have a clue about their mount's life. Half of the riding students don't know how to saddle and bridle their horses, much less feed and care for it. Tom was on a colt that had been at the barn for a month or so. For some reason, Tom got off of him. I saw Tom look at the ground around him as if he'd either dropped something or saw something that he needed to pick up. He briefly appeared to disconnect from the horse and the horse walked off. Tom had probably just climbed on the colt for something else. He often did this to help a horse that was having a problem with its particular experienced rider with its partially experienced rider, sorry. Normally, if Tom were on a colt, he would be riding with a snaffle bit rigged up with a Makati. This is tied to provide a closed set of reins and lead rope, which Tom always tucked into his belt so he wouldn't lose the colt if he had to get off to do some chore. I was about 100 feet away from Tom on a higher level and was in a good spot to view all that came next. This happened in about 1971. I didn't give what came next much thought, but now time and experience have replaced some lack of my knowledge at the, oh, sorry, new page, <laughs> at the time. I now realise that what I saw was an example of Tom's special interspecies communication, where also the colt responded quickly, maybe out of gratitude to Tom's rescuing him from an incompetent rider. Sounds complicated, 
but to Tom it was a simple process. So, back to Tom and the loose colt. That wasn't really loose, but to me then it was walking away from Tom. The colt jigged straight away from Tom about 70 feet down the back side of eight corrals. I saw Tom from the back. He squatted down where he still stood and made some hand motions, I thought. He appeared to cause the horse to stop and turn around and walk right up to Tom. If the colt had run back to the box stall barn where he lived, he would have seriously disturbed some of the kids and their horses at the end of the barn. What I saw then, as just a lucky example of hooking on, was in reality a vintage Tom Doran demonstra demonstration of just one way that Tom connected with horses. Some animal behaviour scientists might describe this as Tom's extra sensory exception. A unique product of domestication with humans playing the dominant role. Hmm, not so fast. Tom would never claim to make the greater contribution. The chance that what I saw that day with the colt was accidental is in my opinion about 2%. I now think as I reflect on this incident today that there is all of a 98% chance that Tom used what to him came so naturally. He communicated with the colt mentally and backed it up with body language. Horses can react instantly to the flick of an eye, ear and body movements. The two of them were having a conversation. The result to Tom was as predictable as a request to please pass the salt and pepper at the dinner table. Tom didn't think that how he interacted with horses was miraculous. But to those of us who watched him work, his horse magic, the results were magical. In the not so recent past, we humans came to rely on animals for so many of our basic needs. Our lives literally depended on them. The semi-domesticated animal, livestock, etc. The completely domesticated animal, horses, beasts of burden, dogs, were our food, protection and transport. Horses and dogs were, and still are, partially our working partners. Horses have even become greater money makers and do have a significant, significant role as money makers that impact the GNP of our country. People with some or many of Tom Dorrance's horse communicating talents probably were more plentiful in the past. Most of us today rely too much on technology to communicate and do things for us. The days when almost all of the human race depended on animals for their very life is fast disappearing. I think what Tom seemed to radiate almost immediately was an inborn kindness and an extremely logical intelligence. He seemed to be able to communicate with anything he probably could have found a way to bend a spoon just by looking at it for long enough. Tom used to highlight a schooling session by saying that two steps forward sometimes requires a step backwards. We take, but sometimes have to give part back. Well, might it be that to understand better the connection between horse and man, we might have to look behind us once in a while so we don't lose sight of the past. Shock and awe, horse style. Our neighbour had an Arab stallion that was hard to load into a trailer. He had a little fear, but a lot of testosterone and a full bag of tricks based on avoidance, playing dumb, getting ahead of the handler, any behaviours that worked for him. The horse had a PhD on the subject. The owners tried many kinds of trailers with no success. The trailer, however, was not the problem. My husband Roy and Tom were asked for their help in loading the horse. If my memory serves me right, the horse had some mares to breed to at another location and part of the deal when he was purchased 
and a couple of mares were in heat. The horse had probably unintentionally been taught not to load by the owner's unsuccessful loading attempts. Plus, some much needed leading fundamentals had also been unenhanced. Tom spent about 20 minutes handling the horse on the ground away from the trailer, with and without the flag. Gradually, Tom drove the stallion towards the truck and trailer and went all the way around it. He made a couple of circles left and right. This took less than 10 minutes. Tom walked the horse up to the back of the trailer so he could look into it where he would be loading into it. You could sense and see the change in the horse's attitude. He was losing his edginess and was trying to trust Tom. Not completely, but a lot more than 25 minutes ago. The horse tried to look inside. Difficult for horses because of their visual limitations. The stud leaned forward and even took a step towards the trailer. Maybe he smelled the tasty green alfalfa in the manger. Roy was waiting at the manger door to eventually tie him after the butt chain was snapped from the partition to the back side of the trailer and the door was shut. Then Tom had the driver start up and move the trailer forward several feet and stop. All was quiet as the horse chowed down on the hay in the manger. Speaking of knowing what a horse probably has or hasn't got on its mind, Tom was a reader of horses' thoughts as well as their other physical signs. My husband trained a lot of Arabians, especially in the early years of their popularity. Many were talented, some were not, pretty much typical of all breeds. He was riding this colt for the first time, a scrawny Arab gelding without much incentive to do anything really. Its flight response was highly developed though, and he managed to squirt out from under Roy and left him sitting on the ground. Once Tom saw that Roy was unhurt, he said, get back on Roy, he doesn't know what he did. The colt did become rideable and graduated from the round pen. Tom never held it against a horse for not being talented. He always reminded us to ask for a response, don't demand it. The slightest attempt by the horse to respond should be encouraged. It's our responsibility as the trainer to know how to ask and how to reward. I think this is the greater issue and we're often at fault more than the horse. We constantly must remind ourselves to see the horse's point of view. Human motives can often get in the way of developing a good relationship with horses. So thank you. <laughs> that was a wonderful story, full of um, gold dust. <laughs> I was going to say gold gems, no gold dust. So yeah, I hope you're enjoying these stories as much as me. Um, please go out and buy the book. It's such a treasure to own. It's beautifully bound, full of wonderful pictures. And um, yeah, it's just something to go back and uh, check in on again and again. So thank you for joining me today. Keep tuning into the light and I look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>